That's a good hype video. What they need to do, though, and, and I'm glad they didn't because I wouldn't have been able to read my papers here, they need to dip the lights and make people... Difficulty now, though, for Delaware State is we've got some guys banged up, not able to play, and their key players, uh, such as Brandon Stoden, the leading uh, scorer for Delaware State, the 6'11 senior, um, and he, yeah, he's frustrated. He he wants to play. He is a player, and he does not want to be sitting on that bench. So we're going to start this game with a technical foul against Delaware State. They'll send Joe Bryant Jr. to the line for Norfolk State because uh, Delaware State, the equipment problem is the responsibility of the home team, and they get the technical foul for not having equipment that will work. And Joe Bryant Jr., before the opening tip, told somebody between games, Man, until you. they get that equipment, we might have to just get used to being down one to nothing when the opening tip-off is conducted. And this kid, Joe Brown Jr., man, we've watched him play over the last several years, and he's dropped probably about a good 20, 25 pounds, man. It's much lighter. Got a little bit lean. Okay. Opening tip goes to Norfolk State, goes to Bryant, and he'll stand out at center court and then toss it right side to Kaheem Brown. Brown back out to Bryant, top of the key. Norfolk State in the dark green uniforms with gold numerals. Shot taken by Brown and missed wide left. But a follow-up to Heem Brown on the putback. Brown makes it a 3-0 game. As uh, Delaware State now with their first possession trying to even things up here. Get back into this game quickly. Corey Perkins on the left side getting the uh, start tonight for Delaware State. Five seconds on the shot clock. Martez Robinson called for the turnover. Norfolk State will put the ball in play. They'll give it back to Joe Brown as he crosses center court with it and takes it to the right side. Leaves it off there for Kaheem Brown. Out to Nisaiah Chambers. Chambers goes left side to Bryant. Shot from the left corner for two. That's going to be a three. Six to nothing. Yeah, Daryl Anderson. Hornets playing 2-3 zone. Spartans playing full court man-to-man -man with a run and jump trap here. Jevin Munez working with Martez Robinson. Now they give it to Perkins out at center court. They're working around the... Munez, Perkins wants three, bounces it off the rim, and it comes down to Daryl Anderson for Norfolk State. Anderson gives it to Brown. Brown driving through, his shot blocked by Somerville. That's what the 6'11 guy specializes at. Munez takes it all the way down and gets the layup. It's good to see him on the board early, because if he gets off to an early start, it's a chance he can have a really nice night. Hornets 
Now trailed by just four. Six to two with 18.05 left in the first half here from Dover. Joe Bryant Jr. trying to work inside, has to pull up, bounces it away. Now from the top of the key, hits it off the front of the rim, comes out to Corey Perkins for the Hornets. Perkins will bring it down the right side, give it off to Munez. Munez looking inside, takes it to the left side of the foul circle. Inside underneath, Somerville with the short jumper, can't get it to go. Bryant will bring it down. Gets it away to Daryl Anderson. Back to Bryant. Left side. Out to Anderson. Top of the key for three. Swish. That's right. You got to guard this young man here. He's two for two from Daryl Anderson. Looks like he's a pretty good shooter. Six points for him on two shots that go in. Making it nine to two. And Hornets can't let Norfolk State get way out in front. They have not been able to be a comeback team. Perkins out to Munez. He wants three more. Off the rim. And, and it's uh, Somerville there for the rebound as he goes to put it back in. He gets fouled. It's a nice rebound for him, and that's a good start because that's just what you need him to be on the offensive glass. Sometimes he struggles from the field, but if he can create some activity by getting off, being aggressive on the offensive glass, uh, hopefully he can get these free throws and get a chance to see the ball go through the basket, give him a chance to get off to a good start. You'd think the big guy inside would get a lot of opportunities at the line. This is just his 10th foul shot of the season and the seventh make. So he goes from 66.7% to 70% on that shot. And you really need the shots from the line. Somerville into the scoring column. Second shot misses. And the Hornets get the rebound, so they get another opportunity to put points on the board. Perkins down in the left corner to Robinson. Munez through the paint, off the glass, good. That's good ball movement by the Hornets, moving the ball from side to side and catching a cutter, slashing through the lane for a he, basket. A beautiful pass on the bounce to Munez as he came through the lane. Bryant on the right side to Brown. Back out to Bryant near center court. Over to the left side to Daryl Anderson. Anderson, short lob pass inside to Bankston. They go underneath. Chambers got tied up, and they took it away. Perkins will take it down the right side for the Hornets. Bounce pass down on the right side to Robinson. Back out to Perkins. Perkins calling the play to his teammates, setting it up. Left side to Robinson. Munez goes baseline, clears it out. Perkins outside, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Tried to go inside to Kyle Johnson and knocked out of bounds. And that will get us to our first break here with 15.59 left in the first half. It's Norfolk State 9, Delaware State 5, putting the U in HBCU. We are HSRN. I'm Dr. Verdi and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Mosley, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Sam Ginder, and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Rudy, and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa Ann Eppinger, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Samuels, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Kendall Barton, and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Justine Chowdhury, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Vassigar, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Sue Chafin, and I'm here for our Hornets. It's your boy, Chef JJ. It's your boy, Chef Gamble. And we are the Good Brothers LLC, your official game day sponsors for DSU Athletics. And the Hornets off to a little bit of a slow start, but picking it up here as they've come back from a 6-0 deficit to 9-5.
Inbounded to Corey Perkins. Perkins sends it out. Munez for three. Moonshot from Munez. As I said earlier, off to a great start, and they need him to score. He's capable. They very much need him to be in the box score. Seven points from of the eight for Delaware State for Munez. 9-8 game now. They tie up Chambers in front of the Hornets bench, and then inside, Bankston has it taken away. Hornets looking to take the lead here. Munez loses the handle as he comes down, picked up by Delaware State. Martez Robinson saving it. Gets it out to Corey Perkins. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Perkins now sets it up. Oh, I'm sorry, 15 seconds on the shot clock. He must have said 20. I thought that was pretty quick. Now down to 10. Munez, right side, Kyle Johnson, and a whistle stopping play. Hornets ball, but not much time left on the shot clock here. They'll have to be quick with it. Dana Tate Jr. coming into the game for the Spartans. Nisaiah Chambers will go out. Martez Robinson looking for the successful inbound pass. Takes it to the left corner to Johnson. Johnson into the paint. Sends it out to Perkins. Perkins takes it right side. He gets it back now. Sends it over to Munez looking in for another three. Swish! Jevin Munez is on the mark. No fire. That's what they need, though. They really need him to step up. It's good to see you all to an early and good start. Hornets in front now, 11 to 9. That's nine unanswered points for Delaware State. Joe Bryant Jr. goes right side to Kaheem Brown. They try to work it inside underneath. Dana Tate with a jumper. It'll miss. And it'll be the rebound by Kyle Johnson for the Hornets. He gives it off. Martez Robinson brings it down the left side. Corey Perkins gets it in the middle, out by the logo. Working to the right side. Going to Munez, left side. Thought about going for three. He'll take it inside to the paint, send it out. Martez Robinson wants three. Martez Robinson hits it. 14 to nine, Hornets go in front with 14 minutes left Playing in the, the half. Ball. Making shots, that's the key. 12 unanswered points now for Delaware State. Kaheem Brown working to the left side. I'm surprised Robert Jones hasn't wanted a timeout in here. Dana Tate with a jumper just inside the arc for two. Yeah, they have to figure out how they're going to guard that, though, because that's open wide, wide open in the middle of that lane there. 14 to 11. Corey Perkins passes it right side. Martez Robinson. Robinson, Munez, top of the key. He'll drive left side of the paint. Pulls up. Jumper. Hits off the rim. Battle for the ball underneath, still being tipped around, still loose, and then we're going to have a foul as Kyle Johnson tried to reach in and tie up the Norfolk State player, and unfortunately for him, committed the foul. That will uh, give the ball to Norfolk State with 13-23 left in the half. Very aggressive play here by Delaware State, and that's what they're going to need to beat this Spartans team. That's what it takes, man. you got to come and be up to the challenge, and it looks like they're up to the challenge tonight. Norfolk State let that inbound roll all the way down. Didn't pick it up until it got in the forecourt. Bankston now with the ball, sends it left side. Shot for three, comes off the rim on a miss by Tate. And for the rebound, it's Somerville for the Hornets. Quickly down to Munez in the left, left corner. They'll send it back out and clear it out to Perkins. Corey Perkins, sophomore, to the right side. He'll pull it down and go for three every once in a while. Now Martez Robinson driving inside. Munez back to Robinson on the left side. Steps up, drives along the baseline. Good move. Sends it out to Robinson. Or, or yeah, Kyle Johnson. And Johnson's shot is off the rim. A good shot, though, by Robinson. Shot now by Norfolk State. Miss by Kaheem Brown. Came down to Delaware State right off the rim. Corey Perkins, fingers in the air, showing numbers and which play they want to go with here. Perkins rotates around to the left side, takes a pass from Munez. Perkins tied up. Loose ball taken away from him by Tate. Tate, one on two. Goes up. Nice layup by Tate as he just worked around the defenders. Yeah, Corey Perkins has got to take care of the basketball. That's kind of ill-advised turnover. Turns into a quick two for Norfolk State. So you can't do that. That'll take your momentum away right away. 
14-13 now. Hornets still in front by one with 11.50 to go in the half. Martez Robinson over to Perkins. Back out to Robinson in the center. To Munez on the right side. Perkins gets it now. Top of the key. Robinson, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Goes inside the arc. Hits it off the rim. And it'll be grabbed by Daryl Anderson for Norfolk State. Anderson gives it off to Brown. Brown left side to Bryant. They get it back to Brown. He puts it up. It rolls around the rim. Won't go. Norfolk State grabs the loose ball. It's Tate with a shot. Missing. And Somerville gets the rebound. Corey Perkins now as he dribbles down towards center court. Goes over near the bench. Gets some instruction from Coach Waterman. Now comes across center court and works to the right side to Kyle Johnson. Kyle Johnson sends it to Somerville. Munez inside the foul circle. Can't get a good shot. Looks for some help. Gets it to Perkins. Five seconds on the shot clock. He goes baseline. He's tied up. He's not going to get a shot off. And they'll lose it on the shot clock violation. I tell you, the defense of Norfolk State has been outstanding. Uh, you know, early on, Hornets made some shots. 10.48 left in the first half. It's Delaware State 14, Norfolk State 13. Putting the U in HBCU, we are HSRN. Calling all Hornets fans. Be sure to follow Bay Health on social media. Find us on Facebook at Bay Health, on Twitter at Bay Health DE, on Instagram at Bay Health. You can find us on TikTok and on LinkedIn. Bay Health, we're here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron, president of Sodell Concepts, the best restaurant group in the state, and we're inviting you to come join our team. Soto Concepts is a growing hospitality company with 16 restaurants and a variety of other hospitality businesses, all located in beautiful Southern Delaware. We have recently added many departments to our executive leadership team, including a training department, a property development department, and a construction department. We invite you to come live at the beach and work with a growing restaurant group with many opportunities to advance your career. Soto Concepts Restaurant Group, come check us out. Action here at Delaware State University. Gary Lang, Coach John Hill, and the Hornets up by one almost halfway through the first half. Terrence Jones with the ball. Reaction from the crowd to a move he makes. George Beal Jr. sends it out. Joe Bryant with a shot from maybe about three, four feet behind the arc. Missing. Yeah, he's a leading three-point shooter this year, having made 34 on the season thus far. So he's going to put it up and taking almost 100. He's their leading shooter on just about every category, isn't he? <laughs> almost. He, he carries the team. After the ball went out of bounds, Spartans got it back. Bryant had the ball go up in the air as, as he tried to drive in for a shot. Comes out George Beal with a three-pointer to put the Spartans back in front, 16-14. to 14. Second lead change of the game here now as we get to the halfway point of the half. Ten minutes to go in this first half. Corey Perkins left-handed pass over to Okoye Parker. He got into the game in the first half last week. Previously, he was a second-half replacement. He really can stir this drink when he gets in. He earned some playing time one night. He played so well. Devin Munez, three seconds on the shot clock. And Parker missing there in and out on the three-shot from the left corner. It's Beal now, giving it off, sending it into the middle to Bryant. Bryant bounce pass, nice inside underneath and a double block there as the Hornets got together Kyle Johnson and Ray Somerville. But Beal with another three. That was a good job of the Hornets. Um, rejecting Tate's shot, but um, Nova State was able to get the rebound and up 
uh, Bill hitting a three-pointer. You have to stay with it. You know, you can't you, you can't make the block and then let them get the ball back. You have to take the ball away from them. We have a timeout. I don't think this is our media timeout, so we're going to keep it right here. And remind people, alkaline water at its best. B2L29 Premium Alkaline Water. Visit them on the web at B2L29PW.com. We'll be back with you on Saturday here on HSRN with Delaware State Basketball. We'll be in Princess Anne as the Hornets women and men go down to take on the UMAS Fighting Hawks. That game, the women's game starting at 2 o'clock. The men's game comes along a half an hour after the women's game starts. Hope you'll be with us. Check us out on hsrn.com. You can download the HSRN mobile app so you can take us with you wherever you go. And don't forget to tell a friend, a Hornet fan, they can listen to the games too. One and a half percent from the floor coming off cold from the bench. And he can really get things going when he gets into the game. Right now it's Kyle Johnson working along the baseline for the Hornets and stepped on the line. Stepped on the line. You see more and more of that, you know, in college basketball now where kids are stepping on the line. <laughs> Well, more, that, more often than ever. It's defenders that don't give them an area to come through, don't set up where they're going to get called for the foul if they're moving, leave a little bit of space, and then the guy tries to sneak through. Andre Bottoms tries to send it down inside, and we're going to get a foul on Delaware State, and it's against Kyle Johnson. Tell you what, looking around the stands here at Delaware State University tonight, it is great to see this many people. Most of them in the student section behind us or on the two ends. But a good-sized crowd here on this Monday night. In my experience, a lot of times, um, when the student body likes the players, they'll come out and watch them. Shot for three, missed on the attempt by Terrence Jones. And now we have a whistle and a foul. It's going to be on Dana Tate. Dana Tate, offensive foul. Teams are even, even with two fouls each here in the first half. So we're not in a situation where, unless somebody's fouled in the act of shooting, nobody close to the bonus yet is Martez Robinson working down to the right side, pulling up, looking to get rid of it, gets it off to Munez. Munez backing in to the paint, his shot off the rim. And it's taken by Ron Lucas, sent out to the outside. And we're going to have a foul here on Norfolk State. This is going to be on an Isaiah Chambers. And uh, he kind of, as Somerville went up and slapped that ball away, Chambers kind of submarine Somerville. Yeah, I think he just kind of continued to drive into him. Back in, the, back in his body into him. So I think the official thought it was a bit excessive, so they call a foul. Inbound goes to Ronald Lucas. Lucas gets it off to Martez Robinson. 15 seconds on the shot clock for Delaware State. Parker working with Robinson. Robinson left side of the foul lane. Got it. That's Robinson's shot right there. A little penetration pull up. He feels very comfortable taking that shot. 19 to 16 now. Hornets trail by three. Under eight minutes to go in the half. It's George Beal. Left side wants three. Beal. So he was. That is his third from out there. Got to find Bill. Norfolk the State has five three pointers in the half so far. And Beal has three of them. 22 16 with 7.35 to go in the half. McCoy Parker 
They double up on him. He gets it off to Somerville. Somerville works inside, passes across through the hands of Robinson and right to Norfolk State. They'll send it down to Beal in the corner. He'll bring it back out. He gets wrapped up and loses the ball, but it's saved by Tate. Inside underneath, it's Chambers. They wouldn't let him get position for his shot. And the Hornets grab the loose ball, getting up slowly. Oh, no, Martez Robinson, he's going to limp down court. And just before the shot, we had a whistle. What is it? I was looking at Martez Robinson. I didn't catch it's it. It's going to be either. an offensive foul. Yeah, I think he might have caught a knee into the thigh. He might be able to walk it off here. Koye Parker gets called for the offensive foul. Timeout here and a little bit of extra time for Robinson to get his feet back under him. 7.05 left in the first half. Norfolk State 22, Delaware State 16. Putting the U in HBCU. We're HSRN. Hey Hornets, I'm Dr. Candace Samuels, a family medicine doctor at Bay Health Family Medicine Dover and a proud Delaware State alum. As a family medicine doctor, I provide primary care for the entire family, from the newest addition to grandma and grandpa and everyone in between. I also offer OB care, including prenatal care and low risk deliveries for moms to be. I'm proud to be caring for the community that raised me and I'm especially honored to give back to my DSU family. I'm Dr. Candace Samuels, and I'm here for our Hornets. Why choose Dell One? Dell One is rooted in Delaware and here to cover you through your financial journey. From your first account, auto loan, or rewards credit card, buying a home or starting a business, investing, planning for retirement, and then enjoying it. Get what you need, when you need it. Dell One has you covered. Choose Dell One and let's grow together. Hello, I'm Kimberly Holmes, Stroke Clinical Nurse Specialist at Bay Health, Chair of the Delaware Stroke System of Care Committee, and Board President of the Delaware American Heart and Stroke Association. I am also a proud DSU alumna. Stroke disproportionately affects African Americans. I am driven to educate my community regarding the prevention and or control of risk factors such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and obesity. I'm Kimberly Holmes and I'm here for our Hornets. I know he wants to get back into the game. Norfolk State has it as we come back. Cush College is a proud supporter of HBCU Sports. Find them on the web at cushcollege.com. Shot from inside the paint by Kahim Brown. Now they scramble on the floor. There's a tie-up, a jump ball, and the possession will go to the Hornets. Jump ball possession, Delaware State. Good hustle there. Ronald Lucas diving to the floor there to help get that ball. Yeah, that was great hustle by Ronald Lucas because he basically created another possession for his team just by effort. Hornets down by six right now, 22-16, trying to make some of it up here. Norfolk State not, in, not allowing too many shots from inside. The Hornets got on a bit of a run there by hitting some threes. That's the guy that was getting them too, De Jevin Munez. They tie him up near center court, passes it down to Lucas. Down in the corner now, loose ball. They'll send it back to Lucas, but in the interim, traveling will be called on Kyrie Staten, who was on the floor trying to get the ball, but had to move around, and they got him for traveling. They, um, Nova State is hedging that ball screen so hard, and they got so much length, it's hard for the Hornets to throw the ball over them. Norfolk State, when you look at them, just a little bit bigger than Delaware State in, in many of their matchup positions. The Hornets are going to have to fight here. Kahim Brown sends it inside. Munez steps in front, blocks a pass. It's Beal is going to have to throw it up. Had to get rid of it and did and got another three. This kid has made four threes here. He's coming in off the bench. He's probably the only one who needs to be shooting at this time. He's the only one who scored here for a while for Norfolk State. He has 12 points in the game. Now we have a whistle and action away from the ball. Let's see what this one is. This could be Kyle Johnson. Down 30, first base 
Chris Bankston called for the personal foul. That's his first and the team's fourth foul. 5.45 left in the half. But a nine-point lead now for Norfolk State. And Delaware State, since they had the lead at 14-9, have only scored two points. Norfolk State with 16. Inbound pass blocked by Norfolk State, slapped right back out of bounds. Kyrie Staten getting a breather here, and Martez Robinson back into action. So no ill effects from banging his knee on the court earlier. In fact, he has the ball right now on the left side, gets it out to Corey Perkins. He's out on that Hornet logo near center court, playing catch with Robinson, right side to Munez. Robinson now trying to get free. Three seconds on the shot clock, went for a pass. It's taken away by Norfolk State. Dana Tate on the steal. Inside underneath, reverse dunk by Chris Bankston. 27-16 now, Norfolk State up by 11 with 5.05 left in the half. Robinson with Perkins, Robinson. Shooting from outside the arc, Martez Robinson. Good shot there, Robinson. That's his second three of the game. Basket much needed, too. Yeah, they, they really needed to uh, break the ice there. 27-19, back to an eight-point lead for Norfolk State. They give it to Beal, who's been killing Delaware State with three-point shots. Four of them in tonight. They'll send it down in the right corner. It's Tate, and Tate drops a three. Hey, yeah, Norfolk State got shooters all over the floor. Everybody on the floor can shoot the three. Makes it really tough to guard because they're stretching the floor on you. All you have to do is look at their scoring and, and all the guys who, who are in double figures average on the season, you know they have shooters. It'll be Perkins bringing it past center court for Delaware State. Gets it off to Somerville. Somerville. Gives it off to Robinson in front of the Norfolk State bench. They'll double up on him and try to force a takeaway. And all he could do, Spartans called for a foul, Taheem Brown. And that'll be first for Taheem Brown, but that's five team fouls with 4.15 left in the half. Yeah, uh, Norfolk State is just doing such an outstanding job on hedging the ball screen. And because they have such great length, it's hard for the, uh, for the Hornets to throw the ball out of those. Um, um, it kind of really are turning into traps. So it's really disrupting the offense here. Head coach Robert Jones for Norfolk State was giving his opinion of that foul for the officials. Hornets shot blocked and it went out of bounds. Touched last by the Spartans. And I can see an official over there who's just about ready to give a bench warning to Norfolk State because yeah, they, they the keep court. jumping up. Yeah, yeah they're on the court, so you got to stay clear of the court. Kyle Johnson with Perkins. Munez wants three. Got it, too. 13 points for Jevin Munez. Turned out to be a good one. Munez made his second three on the night. 30 to 22. It's Brown crossing. Passing to the right side to Tate. Back out to Brown in the middle, over to Bryant. Bryant looking to get it inside to Tate. Tate steps back outside the arc, sends it over to Brown. Getting down to five seconds on the shot clock. Hornets not allowing the shot. They clear it out to Tate. His shot misses. Hornets rebound. That's good defense Good defensive there. set by Delaware State that time. That's excellent defense. Perkins on the left side. Looking to go to the middle, off the pick by Somerville. Munez now from the outside, thought about going for three, pulled it down, sent it inside to Johnson. Johnson shot, rejected. He gets it back on the baseline, clears it out to Perkins. We had a whistle. Yeah, they got uh, Johnson, I believe, for charging. That's who they got, Kyle Johnson. As he went for that loose ball, he crashed into the defender. Now, I'm not sure about that one, as we saw a replay of it, but... Uh, no, he actually got the loose ball, and yeah. as he was making an, uh, 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 an attempt to go to score the basketball, they, caused, they 
But the defender was moving, so how do you get the charge? 309 left in the first half. Norfolk State 30, Delaware State 22. Putting the U in HBCU, we are HSRN. Why choose Del One? One out of every 11 Delaware residents is a part of the Del One family. Rooted in Delaware, community driven, Del One strives to be an active part of Delaware neighborhoods and organizations. To this day, the Del One Foundation has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for countless local charities, and our commitment continues. Choose Del One and let's grow together. Taste the uniqueness of our first-generation German bakery in Delhi, the new Bavarian bakery in Delhi in Dover. Authentic, original creations are made fresh from scratch every day. Enjoy one of our great pastries and signature cakes. Don't forget to bring home our house-made breads, Bavarian rye, sourdough, and fresh sandwich rolls. At our deli, choose from 14 different breads. You deserve only the best. The new Bavarian bakery in Delhi in Dover. Why choose Dell One? Dell One is there for you, wherever you are, and is here to help you get to where you're going. Don't just be a number and choose to be a part of Norfolk State will roll the ball down as far as they can. The clock doesn't start until it's touched. That's why they roll it like that. Save a couple seconds. Usually do that later in a half. Raheem Brown sends it over to Bryant. Bryant back to Brown. Brown shooting the three-pointer. Missing. Martez Robinson goes over top of George Beal and gets the rebound. Pass it off to Perkins down the right side. To Munoz in the middle. Corey Perkins now looking. Setting it up. Rolls to the left side, gives it off to Devin Munoz. Devin Munoz gets it back to Perkins. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Clears it to Ron Lucas. Now Perkins shooting off the rim. Loose ball is going to be grabbed by Martez Robinson. That reset the shot clock for Delaware State. Down under two minutes and 15 seconds to go here in the half. Oh, Corey, Corey, per Corey Perkins called for a charge there. Yeah, that was a really smart play by Joe Bryan Jr., uh, just kind of really got ahead of him in terms of anticipation and was definitely sitting right there on the spot. Corey ran right over him. Uh, you can tell experience kind of kicked in on that play. 6'5", 185-pound Corey Perkins knocked the 6'1", 205-pound Joe Bryant for a loop there. But he was coming in hard. Gives the ball back to Norfolk State. Now a pass out of bounds. Missed communication down on that end. Nowhere near the intended player as he zigged, and the pass was for somebody who zags. Yeah, Hornets changed defense that time, went a 1-3-1 one, one, half court, and uh, caused a little confusion. We're under two minutes now left in the half. Martez Robinson, baseline jumper, gets fouled in the effort, and Beal called for the foul. Stops the clock with a minute and 55 left in the half. Now, Martez Robinson can help the team here at the foul line pick up a couple of points without the clock running. He is 14 of 21 from the line on the season. That's 67%. And he got the first one. Played at Newtown High School, Baltimore area. A junior. Yeah, so, he played on the team that won the um, state championship, and there was about another three or four um, Division One players. So he come from good pedigree, good program. And I'll tell you what, Coach Stan Waterman knows talent when he sees it, and he was able to get Martez Robinson in here. He hits both from the line, 30 to 24. Hornets now within six. Daryl Anderson passes it to Joe Bryant. Bryant. Right side of the lane, feeds underneath for the dunk by Chris Bankston. i say Joe, Joe Bryant Jr., that was an excellent thread in the need of pass. Sweet bouncer, wasn't it? Right in between the scene there. Yep. 
why Joe Bryan Jr. is so good. Martez Robinson outside the arc, shooting. Got it. Tell you what, Robinson is in his bag tonight, baby. Martez Robinson and Jevin Munoz Stepping both at up. 13 points on the night. 32-27, an action down the other way. We're going to have a Delaware State foul. And this is going to be on Ronald Lucas. That's his first. And it will be the sixth team foul here with a minute and 11 left in the half. So Norfolk State's going to get a chance to go to the line and make up a couple of those points that Martez Robinson just got for the Hornets as Chris Bankston steps up. Bankston, he's a 67% foul shooter on the season. Sixth in the MEAC in scoring. And there's a, one of the reasons why is he hits the first one. Third in the MEAC in rebounding. Does it all for Norfolk State and gets two right there. 34-27 after the two shots by Bankston. Bankston now with six points on the game. And the Hornets trying to set it up, get a couple more points before we go to halftime. Less than a minute left in the first half now. Jevin Munez takes it right side to Ronald Lucas. Tried to pass it to Somerville. Somerville didn't reach up high enough. It went over his hands and right to Norfolk State. It was like Somerville wasn't Traveling. expecting it. We're going to get traveling called on Daryl Anderson. Whoop, no. Oh, Timeout time by up. Norfolk State. Just as Anderson shot. Yeah, timeout before the shot. Well, if you think you can't qualify for a mortgage, think again, folks. This would be a great time to find a mortgage, start the year off right, getting into that new home that maybe you always wanted. Give a call to America's mortgage coach, John Millette, as he can help you through the process of finding a mortgage. Call him at 1-866-409-9000. That's 1-866-409-9000. Back on the air with you Saturday from University of Maryland Eastern Shore here on HSRN. Women's game at 2. The men's game follows the women's game. 30 minutes later, listen in on hsrn.com or go to your app store, download the app, take us with you wherever you go. We'll be happy to have you along and we'll ask you to tell a friend about it so that they can listen in to Hornets basketball also on HSRN. To come back out on the court here, 44.7 seconds left in the first half. And it will be Norfolk State ball. As the Hornets have drawn up their defense that they want to have to prevent Norfolk State from scoring and or get the ball back. It's Beal with the ball. He's been deadly from outside for Norfolk State. Being harassed by Corey Perkins. Puts one up and he gets his first two-pointer of the night. George Field Jr. with 14 of the 36 points for Norfolk State. That's incredible. This kid is taking over. Yeah. Yeah. He is, he is just deadly from out there. You would and never know he's a freshman. He's playing big. You wouldn't know coming into the game he was a 21% three-point shooter. He had only hit six of 29 previous to tonight. But he found the range. There's a foul now on Norfolk State with five and a half seconds left in the first half. Joe Bryant Jr. gets called for it. It's the seventh team foul and it's going to send Jevin Munez into the foul circle to stand at the line and try to put a couple of points up for Delaware State before the half ends. Munez on the season, shooting 61% from the line, and he helps that average just a bit. He's had a good first half. He's up to 14 points now, hitting that first one. And Munez to shoot number two here. Not much time left in this first half. 
Lead changed twice. Norfolk State led early. Delaware State took a lead. And then Norfolk State went on a run. Pretty much fueled by Beal with three pointers. Jevin Munez hitting both from the foul line. 15 points here in the first half. 36-29. Seven point gap. Shot by Norfolk State at the buzzer. Misses. And they'll go to the locker room with the Spartans leading by seven over the Hornets. 36-29 is the score. Putting the U in HBCU, we are HSRN. Why choose Dell One? Dell One is there for you, wherever you are, and is here to help you get to where you're going. Don't just be a number, and choose to be a part of the Dell One family. With personal service, great rates, and accessible products, Dell One has you covered. Whether you prefer to branch out or enjoy the comfort of home, leave it to us. Choose Dell One and let's grow together. Hey Hornet fans, please remember that our friends at the Microtel Inn and Suites in Dover on Route 10 near Dover Air Force Base are here to help you with your hotel needs at a discounted rate. Call them at 302-674-3800 or go online at the Delaware State University Hornets page to set up a reservation for a clean and comfortable night. I'm Dr. Verdi and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Mosley, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Sam Ginder, and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Rudy, and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa Ann Eppinger, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Samuels, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Kendall Barton, and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Justine Chowdhury, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Vassigar, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Sue Chafin, and I'm here for our Hornets. It's your boy, Chef JJ. It's your boy, Chef Gamble. And we are the Good Brothers LLC, your official game day sponsors for DSU Athletics.
Calling all Hornets fans. Be sure to follow Bay Health on social media. Find us on Facebook at Bay Health, on Twitter at Bay Health DE, on Instagram at Bay Health. You can find us on TikTok and on LinkedIn. Bay Health, we're here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Scott Kammer, president of Sodell Concepts, the best restaurant group in the state, and we're inviting you to come join our team. Sodell Concepts is a growing hospitality company with 16 restaurants and a variety of other hospitality businesses, all located in beautiful Southern Delaware. We have recently added many departments to our executive leadership team, including a training department, a property development department, and a construction department. We invite you to come live at the beach and work with a growing restaurant group with many opportunities to advance your career. Sodell Concepts Restaurant Group, come check us out. Hey Hornets, I'm Dr. Candace Samuels, a family medicine doctor at Bay Health Family Medicine Dover and a proud Delaware State alum. As a family medicine doctor, I provide primary care for the entire family, from the newest addition to grandma and grandpa and everyone in between. I also offer OB care, including prenatal care and low risk deliveries for moms to be. I'm proud to be caring for the community that raised me and I'm especially honored to give back to my DSU family. I'm Dr. Candace Samuels, and I'm here for our Hornets. Why choose Dell One? Dell One is rooted in Delaware and here to cover you through your financial journey. From your first account, auto loan, or rewards credit card, buying a home or starting a business, investing, planning for retirement, and then enjoying it. Get what you need, when you need it. Dell One has you covered. Choose Dell One and let's grow together. Hello, I'm Kimberly Holmes, Stroke Clinical Nurse Specialist at Bay Health, Chair of the Delaware Stroke System of Care Committee, and Board President of the Delaware American Heart and Stroke Association. I am also a proud DSU alumna. Stroke disproportionately affects African Americans. I am driven to educate my community regarding the prevention and or control of risk factors such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and obesity. I'm Kimberly Holmes and I'm here for our Hornets. Why choose Del One? One out of every 11 Delaware residents is a part of the Del One family. Rooted in Delaware, community driven, Del One strives to be an active part of Delaware neighborhoods and organizations. To this day, the Del One Foundation has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for countless local charities, and our commitment continues. Choose Del One and let's grow together. Taste the uniqueness of our first-generation German bakery in Delhi, the new Bavarian bakery in Delhi in Dover. Authentic, original creations are made fresh from scratch every day. Enjoy one of our great pastries and signature cakes. Don't forget to bring home our house-made breads, Bavarian rye, sourdough, and fresh sandwich rolls. At our deli, choose from 14 different breads. You deserve only the best. The new Bavarian bakery in Delhi in Dover. Why choose Dell One? Dell One is there for you, wherever you are, and is here to help you get to where you're going. Don't just be a number and choose to be a part of the Dell One family. With personal service, great rates, and accessible products, Dell One has you covered. Whether you prefer to branch out or enjoy the comfort of home, leave it to us. Choose Dell One and let's grow together. Hey Hornet fans, please remember that our friends at the Microtel Inn and Suites in Dover on Route 10 near Dover Air Force Base are here to help you with your hotel needs at a discounted rate. Call them at 302-674-3800 or go online at the Delaware State University Hornets page to set up a reservation for a clean and comfortable night. I'm Dr. Verdi and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Mosley, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Sam Ginder, and I'm here for our Hornets. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Rudy, and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa Ann Eppinger, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Samuels, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Kendall Barton, and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Justine Chowdhury, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Vasagar, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Sue Chafin, and I'm here for our Hornets. It's your boy, Chef JJ. It's your boy, Chef Gamble. And we are the Good Brothers LLC, your official game day sponsors for DSU Athletics. Calling all Hornets fans. Be sure to follow Bay Health on social media. Find us on Facebook at Bay Health, on Twitter at Bay Health DE, on Instagram at Bay Health. You can find us on TikTok and on LinkedIn. Bay Health, we're here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron, president of Sodell Concepts, the best restaurant group in the state, and we're inviting you to come join our team. Soto Concepts is a growing hospitality company with 16 restaurants and a variety of other hospitality businesses, all located in beautiful Southern Delaware. We have recently added many departments to our executive leadership team, including a training department, a property development department, and a construction department. We invite you to come live at the beach and work with a growing restaurant group with many opportunities to advance your career. Soto Concepts Restaurant Group, come check us out. Hey Hornets, I'm Dr. Candace Samuels, a family medicine doctor at Bay Health Family Medicine Dover and a proud Delaware State alum. As a family medicine doctor, I provide primary care for the entire family, from the newest addition to grandma and grandpa and everyone in between. I also offer OB care, including prenatal care and low risk deliveries for moms to be. I'm proud to be caring for the community that raised me and I'm especially honored to give back to my DSU family. I'm Dr. Candace Samuels, and I'm here for our Hornets. Why choose Dell One? Dell One is rooted in Delaware and here to cover you through your financial journey. From your first account, auto loan, or rewards credit card, buying a home or starting a business, investing, planning for retirement, and then enjoying it. Get what you need, when you need it. Dell One has you covered. Choose Dell One and let's grow together. Hello, I'm Kimberly Holmes, Stroke Clinical Nurse Specialist at Bay Health, Chair of the Delaware Stroke System of Care Committee and Board President of the Delaware American Heart and Stroke Association. I am also a proud DSU alumna. Stroke disproportionately affects African Americans. I am driven to educate my community regarding the prevention and or control of risk factors such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and obesity. I'm Kimberly Holmes and I'm here for our Hornets.
The official sponsors of HSRN are Symphony Potato Chips, Fred Drake Automotive, B2 L29 Premium Alkaline Water, America's Mortgage Coach John Millette, the Little Creek Fire Company, and Cush College. And now we are ready to go as Kaheem Brown stands almost in front of us here to inbound the pass to Joe Bryant Jr. They send it to the right side to Daryl Anderson. Looks like they have their starting five out there to start this second half. Anderson down on the left corner. Inside to Isaiah Chambers. His shot up, missed. Loose ball grabbed by Daryl Anderson before it goes out of bounds. Bryant from the corner. They're going to give him three on that one. Hornets kept Bryant quiet in the first half. He had only one point. But he starts it off uh, by hitting a three there, and now it's a 10-point lead for Norfolk State. You got Corey Perkins there on the turnover, and after he turned it over, he grabbed him, so they called an attentional foul. So you basically you get free throws here um, and possession. And Corey Perkins' second foul. It's going to put Kaheem Brown to shoot the foul shots. 77% from the line on the season. The transfer from Georgia to Highlands Collegiate the, in the Georgia Collegiate Athletic Association. It's not the start you wanted right here. No, it isn't. It's a quick five points. Drops um, one in, two in. Drop two. It's a quick five points here for Norfolk State, so uh, the Hornets has got to figure out how to come up with a couple of stops here themselves and um, see if they can score. Makes it 41 to 29 and a 12 point lead, Georgia. Uh, yeah, Georgia. <laughs> Norfolk State gets the ball back to after that foul. Brown working to the right side. Hey, carried that one a little bit. He got away with it. Joe Bryant missing the shot. Somerville on the rebound. Nicely done as he kept that pivot foot in place but got away from the defender who was trying to take it away. Now it's Kyle Johnson. Bounce pass over to Somerville. Jumper, air ball. Hornet saved it. Nice effort by Johnson to get it back into Devin, uh, Jevin Munez. Perkins now, top of the key, over to Munez. Five seconds on the shot clock. He'll send it to Perkins. Perkins, three-point shot, rolls off the rim. Johnson underneath with the putback, missed it. Robinson was knocked down. He got up off the floor and grabbed the loose ball. But the Hornets, unable to score, had four tries. The referee's letting them play. That got a little tough under there, too. But it's a non-contact sport, right? Yeah, Hornets blocking one underneath. It'll be Chambers going to the line after making the shot. Had a clean block first, and then on the follow-up attempt... The uh, Hornets committed the foul. Kyle Johnson with three personals now. Up check. Martez Robinson was called for that. And we have lane violation. Hornets get it back. No harm there as Norfolk State called for the lane violation. Norfolk's running, showing a little pressure. 2-2-1, two, two, full court pressure. Munez working with Robinson. Now Perkins gets into the mix. Back out to Corey Perkins. Right side, Martez Robinson alone. Off the rim, won't go in for him. And it's Chris Bankston on the rebound. He'll give it off to Bryant. Bryant pass center court, down. Good pass to the baseline. Underneath, Johnson on the, on the block. Let's see who get, gets called for the foul, though. Yeah, I thought so. It's going to be Somerville coming in from behind. Kyle Johnson with a good block there, very clean, but Raymond Somerville came in from behind and committed the foul. Yeah, probably just a little body. Um, it looked clean up top, um, but it probably body contact, and that's what the official ended end up calling. That shot missing. Kaheem Brown, a little bit of trouble at the line for him. He had the opportunity before to get a point on the line. Now he gets that one. Yeah, he made a, he's made three out of four in the last two trips. 
44-29 now, 15-point lead for the Spartans. And the Hornets need to chip away at that. They don't want to get into the, you know, the last eight minutes of the game and be down by this because it's tough to come back on this team. Munez, 10 seconds on the shot clock. He'll send it down left side. Martez Robinson from the corner missing. Somerville takes the rebound as it comes out to the foul circle. Hornets got to get a basket. Perkins now looks to the left side. Slipping away. Gets it over Robinson. Robinson steps inside into the paint. Sends it out. Perkins on the right side. Goes baseline. Five seconds on the shot clock. Munez from NBA range. And Jevin Munez is on the mark tonight. 18 points to lead all scorers. Much needed basket. Had to have it. 44-32. 17 minutes to go. Kahim Brown working with Chambers. Now Bryant back out. Chambers top of the key. He'll pull it down. No call there. Yeah. Oh, they're going to call Martez Robinson for a flop. He was set. Yeah, they called him for a flop. He could have easily called that as a charge. Thought he did a nice job getting in, getting in position to, to draw the charge. We're going to look at it again as Robinson was set. Well, you know, he was still on the move just a little he bit. Was. But he took a forearm. And now, did we, did Hornets get hit with a technical? No, whenever they call a flop now, it's okay. one of the rule changes. Whenever they call a flop now, it's almost like a technical. You get to shoot free throws and retain possession. Well, that's twice in a row now that... Uh, yeah, he did. It twice, was very late. Twice in a row that... Uh, Norfolk State has gone to the foul line and gotten the ball. Bryant hitting the first to make it 45-32. Yeah, really critical junction in the game right now. Hornets got to come up with a couple stops. And you know that folks here love that. Dana Tate unable to control the pass. Sends it into Somerville for the dunk. Good feed to Somerville. He gets the dunk. And he's going to go to the line. That's a nice, strong move by Somerville. Finishing at the rim, Duncan. He needed that. So hopefully that will propel him to, you know, to be a little more aggressive around the basket and maybe be able to give a little more offensive power. Daryl Anderson called for the foul for the Spartans. His first, the team's first here in the second half. And did that one wake up this crowd? Oh! Well, we'll soon find out, but I think it's definitely something that can help the morale because it was slightly getting away. Somerville's shot from the line, missing. Norfolk State got the rebound. Bryant past center court with the ball. Working to the left side. Sends it back out to the middle. Now to Bryant. He wants three. Off the rim. Who got, who got the last touch on it? A couple of cheerleaders take the hit there, and one of them knocked back into the stands. Everybody seems okay. Kaheem Brown was going after the ball, and he made contact with the cheerleaders. Not the kind of contact you want with a cheerleader. Well, he was trying not to run her over, so yeah. you've got to give him credit for that. Yeah, he did grab a hold and try to, to protect her a bit, so good job by Kaheem Brown. Spartans still showing full court man-to-man -man pressure here. Robinson to Munez and now to Perkins at center court. Perkins giving it off to Munez as he crosses toward the middle. Back to Perkins, left side. He'll work along the baseline. Sends it on out to Johnson. Back to Munez. Five seconds on the shot clock. Johnson in the lane, puts it up, and he gets fouled. Wouldn't go in, but he will go to the line here because he was in the act of shooting, and this one will go on Dana Tate Jr., his second, and the team's second. 15-45 left in the game, timeout on the court. It's Norfolk State 45, Delaware State 34, putting the U in HBCU. We are HSRN. They go from being them letting them play extremely aggressive so now, ticket to ticket to tech. Yeah, that, that foul down there again.
the next day. So we wanted to invite, invite you to come on out and be a part of that. Kyle Johnson missing the first shot from the line. Yeah, a little strong there. He's got to take a little bit off. Yeah. I'm going to be there along with E.C. Hill and Stan Waterman, and we'll have a chance to talk to coaches about games that were played and games that are coming up. Johnson missing both from the line for Delaware State. Joe Bryant Jr. cross center court with the ball. Working to the left side. Gets it off to Dana Tate. Back to Bryant. And his pass slapped out of bounds by Martez Robinson. They get it back in cleanly to Bryant. 15-25 to go in the game. To the right side. Shot for three by Tate. Missing. And the follow-up put back. Kaheem Brown gets fouled. Yeah, you got to get the offensive rebound off the missed shots. Missed three-pointer. Um, and then you give up an offensive rebound. Martez Robinson just got his third personal. And they don't want him to pick up a fourth here anytime real soon. Don't want to take him out of the game. Brown at the line. Bounces it around. Drops it in. 46-34. Brown will stay at the line and shoot his second. Team Brown. The red shirt junior dropping them both in to make it 47-34. Yeah, and six. that's a 13-point lead. Spartans still showing pressure. 1-2-1-1. One, two, one, one. A 1-2-2 one, two, two full court press here. Three of Kaheem Brown's points tonight have come at the foul line. Corey Perkins, good feed. Beautiful on the alley-oop. Perfectly passed and timed to Raymond Somerville. That's a nice lob there to Somerville. Wait for Corey Perkins. Did a nice job just trying to get him involved. And now as they come down court, Okoye Parker committing his second personal of the night. Non-shooting foul, though. The fifth team foul here in the second half for Delaware State with 15 minutes to play. It'll be George Beal. They get it now to Bryant. Coming in on the baseline, it's Brown. He got blocked. He had to get rid of it. Saved it. Tate gets it. Left side. Out to Bankston. Bankston into the paint. His pass deflected. And the Hornets will take it over. Apoye Parker down court with it. Almost lost it as Kaheem Brown tried to slap it away. But Parker stayed with it. Maybe the Hornets will get a little spark here as Parker tends to do that when he comes into the game in the second half. Need a basket. Parker takes it, crosses the middle, sends it over to Munez on the left side. Parker, Parker right left there. corner, off the rim. Boy, the fans know that he's going to come in and shoot those threes. And as he set up the shoot, fans were coming off their, their seats ready to do the cheer. He's very capable. Tate gives it to Bryant in the forecourt. 14 minutes now left. Bryant drives into the lane, and the layup off the back of the rim. Hornets on the attack. Five on four as Bryant went down and slid in the backcourt. Took him a while to get up. But the Hornets trying to, in a very methodical way, get themselves back into this game. Plenty of time, 13.38 to go. You don't want to panic here and try to go too fast and take yourself out of the game with mistakes. Here's Munez sending it Perkins in front of the bench off the rim, and it comes out to Bryant. Yeah, the last couple three-point shots just haven't been able to connect. Brown feeds into the corner. It's Tate got tied up over there. And how are they going to rule this? Who touched it last? Munez on defense there. Forced Tate along the side, and now the bench is being warned as, again, they got up while the play was right there. Now Ron Lucas will come into the game for Delaware State as Somerville, who's had a good half here, a couple of dunks, will get a chance to sit down. Somerville averaging 3.6 points per game has five here tonight on those big dunks. Now 
Backing in, and the shot rejected by Lucas. All he did was put his arms up in the air. He never even went up, but he blocked the shot. There's Parker for two. The Okoye Parker scoring shot. machine. Cuts it to nine. The Okoye Parker scoring machine might have been started up here. 47-38. Joe Bryant Jr. over to Brown. Brown back out to Bryant, looking for three, rolls it around the rim, comes down to Parker. Parker and Munez down court with the ball, over to Perkins left side. Munez looking, gives it back to Parker on the left, as he'll bring out near center court, and they'll set up the offense. Stan Waterman now directing traffic from the sideline. Parker. Down in the corner to Johnson. Johnson back out to Parker. Five seconds on the shot clock. Parker drives inside, sends it to Perkins. Right side, puts it up. He gets fouled in the act of shooting, and I think he was outside the arc. It'll be Dana Tate Jr. picking up his third personal. And if he was outside the arc, per uh, Parker, yeah, Perkins will go to the line for three. I think they just called it a two. Okay. It's just got to make them, though. Get up here and convert these free throws. Norfolk State's players had gone back to talk to their coach, and the referee went over and said, you guys get up there at that, that foul line area. Hey, he's working. Uh, because he's, he's working. He's working the table, man. Yeah, but he's also delaying the game, and the officials are not allowing that. If they allow you to do it, you can get away with it. Well, I've they seen, didn't allow it. <laughs> I've seen many times I've done it. You're not going to get a free timeout. That's how you work it. Perkins at the line. Free throw. His first point of the game, 47-39. And this is what the Hornets have to do, just chip away at it with 12.07 to go. Plenty of time to do what they need to do. Corey Perkins, second shot. As good as the first. 47-40. Yeah, they're just being gritty, hanging around, being gritty, hanging around. The defense has got to carry you, though. Your defense got to carry. Perkins now will get a breather, and he needs it. Corey Barnes into the game for the Hornets. Yeah, yeah Norfolk State has gotten, gotten cold. Eh? Tate, double up on him. He gets it away to Bryant. Bryant steps in left side of the, the lane. And what's the call here on Delaware State? Foul on Corey Barnes picks up the foul very quickly. We have a media timeout here with 11.49 left in the contest. Norfolk State 47, Delaware State 40. Putting the U in HBCU, we are HSRN. Why choose Del 1? One out of every 11 Delaware residents is a part of the Del One family. Rooted in Delaware, community driven, Del One strives to be an active part of Delaware neighborhoods and organizations. To this day, the Del One Foundation has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for countless local charities, and our commitment continues. Choose Del One and let's grow together. Taste the uniqueness of our first-generation German bakery in Delhi, the new Bavarian bakery in Delhi in Dover. Authentic, original creations are made fresh from scratch every day. Enjoy one of our great pastries and signature cakes. Don't forget to bring home our house-made breads, Bavarian rye, sourdough, and fresh sandwich rolls. At our deli, choose from 14 different breads. You deserve only the best. The new Bavarian bakery in Delhi in Dover. Why choose Dell One? Dell One is there for you, wherever you are, and is here to help you get to where you're going. Don't just be a number, and choose to be a part of the Dell One family. Gary Lang, Coach John Hill at Delaware State University. We have a good one going on here. Four seven-point game with 11.45 to go. Norfolk State leading the Hornets. Joe Bryant Jr. trying to pass inside, and Martez Robinson 
breaking up the pass. Going to be Spartan ball here as Robinson must have stepped on the line as he got the ball. Uh, I think he just got a kick. Okay. Called a kick ball pretty uh, much. I didn't see a kick there, but could have been. Sometimes we're screened on some of the things that happen as we sit courtside. Now it's going to be a turnover, an offensive foul by Kaheem Brown. It gives him two personals. That's the fourth team foul here in the second half. Delaware State with six team fouls. So they don't want to commit any more. It'll put Norfolk State at the line. And the horse can use the basket right here. Akoye Coach is calling Parker. a timeout. Yeah, Parker calling a timeout using one of the timeouts here. And he was right in front of Coach Stan Waterman. So he uh, called the timeout there. It's a, good, it's a big possession, but I don't know if I would have burned a timeout. But... Um, 11 and a half remaining. You may need it on the back stretch here. Seven point game. Uh, if you get a three though, it cuts it to four, so it makes it well worth it. But you want to try to hold on. Water that replenishes you with every sip. B2L29 Premium Alkaline Water. Find them on the web at B2L29PW.com. Game like this, I could use some refreshing water. <laughs> Gets dry real fast, you know? Good game, though. Yeah. It's a really good game. For all of your automotive needs, trust the duck. Fred Drake Automotive, 302-378-4877. And a seven-point difference in the second MEAC contest of the year for both of these teams. Norfolk State over UMES last Saturday. Delaware State didn't have much success against Howard on Saturday, but first home contest conference contest for the Hornets here tonight and they're responding their crowd has really lifted them up well they really gritty tonight you know they haven't really played a, a a great game they played really well offensively the first half but the second half everything has kind of slowed down for both teams actually mm -hmm. neither team have shot it as well so uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens here in this last minute uh, 11, 11 minutes and a half um, who can step up and make some shots but um if the Hornets can just kind of be real solid with their defense and continue to get stops and get us some offensive rebounds, find a way to get to the free throw line. But just even when you can't score field goals, try to get to the free throw line and add points. Hornets so, only shot 43% from the line in the first half, while Norfolk State was at 46%. But the Hornets shooting five of six in the foul line in the first half, and that helped to keep them in the contest at that point. It's Okoye Parker taking a pass cross court from... Martez Robinson. They'll take it into Munez. Robinson now top of the key goes left side to Corey Barnes. Back out to Munez. Robinson now over to Parker. Got the best shooters on the floor. Yes, they do. Five seconds on the shot clock. Turnaround jumper by Parker missing. Robinson tried to tip it in from underneath. Was not able to do so. Now we have a whistle as they come down court. We'll see who gets called for this infraction. Yeah, the Hornets have the best shooters on the floor at this time, but they got to get a good shot. You know, coach has got to dial up something. He called a timeout. You got to dial up something so that you know for sure your team is going to get a good shot. And they passed it around, but they really didn't get a good shot. Okoye Parker gets his third personal foul. Joe Bryant Jr., fifth-year player at Norfolk State. One of the few players who was not a transfer from another college. His whole career has been at Norfolk State last year in a game against Delaware State. He put up 29, 9 of 12 from the field, 5 of 7 from outside the arc. Has not been that hot here against Delaware State tonight, I say, as he shoots a foul shot that goes in. Yeah, he struggled tonight. Typically, he's very explosive, and he's somebody that if they don't keep track on him, he can really explode here in the last 11 minutes. So. With scores, all you got to do is see the ball go through the basket a couple times. Comes into the game, fourth in the MEAC in scoring, averaging 16.7 points per game. He's not close to that tonight, but he got those two foul shots to give him seven on the evening and make it a nine-point game, 49-40. Well, it's got to make a shot here. We've got to dial up something to get a bucket. 
Okoye Parker sends it right side to Robinson. Now back to Parker in the middle, and he'll give it to Munez on the left side. Corey Perkins, right side, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Parker shot from in front of the bench. Parker just a little bit off the mark. Hits off the back of the rim. Comes out to Norfolk State. Need to hit those shots if they want to get back into this thing as we approach the halfway mark of the second half. You've got to be careful not to lose sight of just getting the ball inside sometimes as well. Haven't been able to do that a whole lot, though. Good defense by this Norfolk State team. Shot by Beal from the left corner. One at three. Didn't get it that time. Hornets take it down quickly. Cor oh, man. Corey Perkins took a pass on the inside. Went for the layup. Made it go off the glass. And he'll go to the foul line. That's a hell of a layup for him there, man. That's a big-time layup. Uh, he was coming into a lot of, <laughs> quite a few um, Spartans were challenging that shot. And much bigger guys. Corey Perkins gave up a bit of the body on that one as he went down. Bounced right back up because when you make a shot like that, you feel so good. Make this free throw. you got a six-point deficit here. 10-08 remaining. You're still in a good place. Taheem Brown got the third personal foul there. Perkins' shot rolled around, would not go in, and it came out to Chris Bankston for Norfolk State. He'll give it to Bryant. Bryant to the right side now. Sets up just to the left of the top of the key. Goes cross court to Daryl Anderson. Down in the right corner. Shot for three from Tate. Missing. Hornets get that rebound. Now we're under 10 minutes left in the game. Robinson to Parker. Parker down in the corner. Clears it back out. Sends it to Munez in front of the Hornets bench. They'll clear it out to Perkins and reset the offense here. Yeah, both teams are doing pretty much the same. Shooting a lot of threes here. Nobody's looking to get the ball inside. Munez now looking inside. As we get down to five seconds on the shot clock, turnaround jumper, air ball. Knocked away and cleared out by Norfolk State. Beal went for the layup. And he got blocked from behind by nice Munez. Shot there, Bob. And then That's Martez Robinson. Robinson brings it down and gets two. That's a shot right there. We got a five-point ball game, people. 49-44, and Martez Robinson up to 15 points on the game. That's above his average for the season. Uh, he's played well tonight and played very, very under control also. Robinson gives him good minutes as a team leader and a guard out there, but only averages six and a half points per game, but way above that. Shot missing. Beal gets the rebound, and then we have a foul. Yeah. And this is going to be number four on Martez Robinson. That's been the Achilles heel tonight. You know, even when the Spartans miss, um, they, you know, the Hornets have not been able to come up with the defensive rebound. Coach Stan Waterman quick to respond there with Robinson with four. I think he's going to come out, and Kyle Johnson will come in. Now, maybe Stan Waterman changing his mind there as he calls Robinson uh, Johnson back to the bench area. Shot by Beal is good. He has 15 on the evening to yeah. make it 50 to 44. And sometimes you got to make the decision. Either you're playing to win or you're playing to lose. And if he gives you your best chance to win, you got to ride with him. And Beal hits both from the line, giving him... Uh, now 16 points on the game, 51-44. Beal coming into the game averaging 4.4 points per game. And his, his season high was 18 against Virginia Lynchburg in the season opener back on November 7th. But he's been yeah. on it tonight. He has average increase tonight. That'll yeah, kick it up a few points. Hornets quickly down court. Okoye Parker. And they're going to call off the shot. Parker will be called for the charge. No, no, no. No? No, no, it's a block. Okay, but they're not going to count the shot that it's, went in. Right. They waved that off because the shot was after the foul. Well, the foul came before the basket went in. They called it on the floor when the foul took place, which basically said the basket was no good because it came afterwards. Got to be Chris Bankston getting his second. I thought they were going to call a charge there, but Bankston must have been moving that I didn't see. Okay. Corey Perkins over to Munez, right side. Munez for three, off the rim, won't go, and it's grabbed by Daryl Anderson for the Spartans. 
Spartans bring it down. It'll go to Dana Tate. Back out near center court to Andre Bottoms. The sophomore from Chesapeake, Virginia. Bottoms goes right side to Tate. Tate, they take it inside. Now Tate by himself off the back of the rim. Munez gets it. No harm on that one as they didn't score. Munez brings it down. He'll force his way in. Contact. And yeah, that was a, a little delayed as well, but he called a block, so I thought it was an appropriate call. Beal gets the, the foul as he was moving into position, and Jevin Munez crashed into him. Tell you what, some surprise calls here, and well, they've been right, such a some late calls. Yeah, they've been such a delay on the calls. The whistles have been really delayed. 7.43 still to go. We have a media timeout here. A seven-point game. Norfolk State leads Delaware State 51-44. Putting to you in HBCU, we're HSRN. I'm Dr. Verdi, and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Mosley, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Sam Ginder, and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Rudy, and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Melissa Ann Eppinger, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Samuels, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Kendall Barton, and I'm here for our Hornets. Hi, I'm Dr. Justine Chaudhary, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Dr. Vassigar, and I'm here for our Hornets. I'm Sue Chafin, and I'm here for our Hornets. It's your boy, Chef JJ. It's your boy, Chef Gamble. And, and we are the Good Brothers LLC, your official game day sponsors for DSU Athletics. He leads all scorers right now with 18. Breakout game for Jevin Munez as he hits the first one from the line. And he can make this a five-point game right here. Come on, keeping it close. Bounces around. Looked like it should have gone. It didn't. Just got to make free throws. It's so critical. Yeah, 51-45. How many times that in a post game have we looked at the number of foul shots missed and the difference in the game and score and what they would have meant had some of them gone in? The Hornets look like they're playing a little 1 3 1 here. Beal sends it inside to Dana Tate. Now back out to Beal. Beal steps inside the arc, gets it to Tate. Joe Bryant Jr. on the right, and Joe Bryant Jr. hits the three. You, he can wake up at any time. You know, he's that kid who just kind of makes sure everybody else does their job and gets them the ball and then all of a sudden he'll find his moment. Just woke up and got into double figures with 10 points in a nine point game. 54-45. Seven minutes to go. It's a big basket. Big possession. Oh, it turned it over. Yeah, trying to pass it to Munez. And Bry one. Bryant stole it and he'll go to the line. That's a big turnaround there. That's a quick five points by Joe Bryant Jr. And potentially a six point turnover turnaround here if he makes this free throw. That's huge at this juncture because um, the Hornets were getting some momentum and were climbing their way back into the game. So, Bryant, fifth in the MIAC in free throw percentage, 78%. Yeah, he's a veteran. He's been around for several years, and he's a senior, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, fifth year. Yeah, so, you know, he plays with such poise. He had a season-high 25 against... And he really hasn't Nevada. shot it that well tonight. I'm sorry. Yeah. 25 points against Nevada last month. He's been in double figures in 14 of his 16 previous games. At 13 now. 
45, opened it up. Got the last six points, doubled up the lead for Norfolk State, 12-point lead. Robinson gets fouled as he makes a move into the paint. Get the free throw here. Go to the line. Got to make your foul shots, though. The you know, only way you can win close games is you got to step up and make foul shots. George Beal called for his third personal, and it will send Martez Robinson out there. He's having a pretty good night himself as he adds another point to give him 16 on the evening. He's had he a really and Jevin Munez combined for 35 of the Hornets' 43 points. He's had a solid evening for sure. Robinson with both. 17 on the night for him. 10-point ten ten deficit with 6 629 remaining. Need some stops right now. Hornets need some stops. Hornets is playing a 1-3-1 half-court zone here just to give the Spartans something different to look at. 57-47 with 6-10 left. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Bryant looking for an opening. He's going to shoot from the top of the key. Roll it around the rim. And Somerville is there for the rebound for Delaware State. All right. See if we One of the few times here. that Jevin Munez wasn't able to hold on to a rebound, but Somerville took it away from him. Robinson. Martez Robinson off the back of the rim, and it comes out. Hornets have not been able to get many offensive rebounds, and they really need those second chances. Bryant clears it to Beal on the left side. Beal drops another three. Yeah, that's a killer right there. That hurts. 19 points for him. He's tied with Munez for the scoring lead tonight. And back out a 13-point deficit here. 60-47. Robinson now left side out to Munez. Over to Perkins, right side. Baseline, Robinson underneath. And as he goes up, they block the shot, but they do it by fouling him. And Martez Robinson will go back to the line. He's got to keep putting points on the board. He's still in striking distance. Yeah. Fourth personal foul on Dana Tate, Jr., 517 still to play and in the game of basketball you know in some sports 13 points 13 runs or whatever you figure oh it's late there's plenty of time here oh yeah you can make up 10 12 points and with you know good foul shooting <laughs> particularly it starts with good foul shooting for sure Robinson. those are free points nobody is contesting it. all you got to do is stand up there and knock them down um, but you got five minutes to go. That's a lot of time left in this game. And, um, and, and you just, he makes this free throw. You're right at an 11-point ball game. Kyle Parker, Kyle uh, Johnson, rather, out. Out. McCoy Parker back in, and Martez Robinson hits both from the line. He's the third player in the game with 19 points tonight. 61, 60 to 49. 20. It's Kaheem Brown taking it inside and a short jumper for two. Yeah, he really at attacked Somerville. He's got to kind of defend that basket a lot better than that. That was far too easy. 62 to 49. And now we have a whistle. We'll have a foul. And let's see if Akoye Parker is going to the line for Delaware State. He is. Terrence Jones, first personal for him. That is the 10th team foul. I'll tell you, from the games I've watched this year, you know, um, Parker is one of the better scorers mm -hmm. on this team. I, I'm not sure why he doesn't clock more minutes. Uh, maybe because, you know, defensively he's not as strong. But he scores the ball every time. He makes that free throw. And um, given him time and opportunity, he usually takes advantage. Hit the first one there for the Hornets. Now Somerville will get a breather as Ronald Lucas will come into the game for the Hornets. Lucas, a senior, he's been through the, the dog days here at Delaware State. He would like to see a turnaround with this team in his senior year. Oh, no doubt. And we Got a have lane a lane violation. violation. Martez Robinson, I think, uh, into in the football, lane. Yeah, in football, they would have called it a false start. He got moving a little bit and then tried to jump back, and Norfolk State players started yelling and pointing. Yeah, that's and just, and that's not good right there, man, because it shows 
you know, lack of discipline. You're trying to climb back into the game. You took away you a, a scoring opportunity from a scoring shooter. Joe Bryant takes it all the way down himself. Ball rolls off the back of the rim and down into the hands of Chris Bankston, who dunks it. Take your time. You're still in the game. 430. Just need a good basket. Need a good shot here. 64, and a basket. 64-50. Perkins. Left side now to Munez. Munez looks, sends it inside. Robinson and a whistle. We have a foul. We'll take it. Yeah. We'll send Martez Robinson to the line. See if he can pick up a couple more points. He's been making his free throws, so, you know, we'll take it. Just want to kind of continue to put points on the board here. That's the fourth personal on Kaheem Brown. Somerville is set to come back into the game here for Delaware State after this first shot by Martez Robinson. And he makes it. Well, you know, this is that time of time and period of the game where you got to now have stops. The only way you're going to really get yourself back into this is you got to get a, you got to start getting a couple of stops right now. Lucas out, Somerville in, so they get some height in there for rebounding and maybe some second chances and some takeaways when Norfolk State misses. Robinson with the scoring lead in the game, 21 points tonight. 64-52, it's a 12-point game. And that, that really exceeds Robinson's season high of 12 against Longwood back on December 3rd. He had 11 against Howard last Saturday. Maybe he's ready to break through. It's Bryant with the ball out near the logo and being guarded tightly by Corey Barnes. Over to George Beal, back to Bryant in the middle. Under four minutes to go. Sends it into Daryl Anderson. Anderson trying to get it closer in. Oh, we have a whistle, and I thought we were going to get traveling called on Chris Bankston as he took a pass in the air and then came down, but instead contact made by Corey Perkins and he gets called for the foul. We got our last media timeout coming up here with 3.48 left on the clock. 64-52 the Spartans over the Hornets right now. Don't go away. This could be a great 3.48 down the stretch. Putting the U in HBCU. We're HSRN. Yeah, they got to get a few stops for sure. And some rebounds. Because no right now They'll be recording for the live audience for a telecast available on YouTube on Friday of every week. You want to be part of the crowd? Come on out. Boulevard Restaurant on Bay Road in Dover. Chris Bankston at the line, dropping the in the first one. Makes the second as well, two for two. 66-52, it's a 14-point game. The Hornets going to have to try to do something really special here as we're down to 340 left. Had to move quick, but just not be in a hurry. Right. Don't want to take too much time off the clock, but make sure you have good shots when you take them. Would that be the formula? Into Munez in the foul circle. Feeds inside underneath. 
Somerville off the glass gets the bucket and gets a chance to go to the foul line. That's a great high-low look there. Yeah, didn't put it up high enough for the alley-oop and the dunk, but he took it nicely and just punched it off the glass. Munez to Somersville. Somerville gets a chance to complete the three-point play. That's a nice assist by Munez. Brandon Somerville. Averaging just under four points per game, missing that shot. Yeah, got to make free throws. Just kind of struggled at the foul line tonight. It's been the difference. Yeah, he's came into the game six of nine on the season from the line. You'd think a guy who plays the inside that much would get more foul opportunities, foul, foul shot opportunities. Somerville with a block there, just put the arms up in the air and blocked the shot by Kaheem Brown. Ball went out of bounds. Norfolk State will keep it with 3.08 to go in this 12-point contest. Bryant almost lost the ball, had to keep it, and it was Corey Barnes who was trying to take it away. Bryant muscling his way inside. Yeah, it's not smart play, though, because at this point in the game, everything is a two-shot foul. You want to be solid with your defense, but you don't want to be fouling and putting them on the line because you're giving them two free shots on every foul. Yeah, and the question would be, do you want to put the guy who's fifth in the conference in free throw percentage at the foul line at this point of the game? And I'm pretty sure the answer is no. You don't want to do that. No, I don't think that's something you want to do. Gets another one. Yeah, I just don't know how smart that is. I think Coach is now subbing offense, defense, bringing Parker into the game. Barnes going out. Uh, you want to guard him, though, and make it tough, but you don't want to foul him. The Hornets had held Brown, uh, Bryant down pretty well in the first half and partway through the second half, but now all of a sudden he's become Joe Bryant Jr. again. And he now has 15 points on the game, 68-54. It's just his time, you know. In the beginning, it's not his time. <laughs> <laughs> Any time is his time. He's finishing. He's the finisher. Yeah. He'll start strong. He'll finish strong. He'll do it. Corey Perkins driving inside, sending it right side to Parker. Shot for three, missing for Robinson. And Hornets unable to get the rebound there. And that's where they're getting hurt, too. They're not getting the second chances to yeah, try to put it in. Robinson has played really well, but he's not a three-point shooter. Bryant driving through traffic. His shot rolls off the left side of the rim down to Robinson. Robinson will take it down. And send it out to Perkins. Left side, they'll get it down to Parker in the left corner. Out to Munez, but hold on, we have a whistle. And a foul. And I think Somerville is going to go to the line. Kaim uh, must have fouled out. That's it. He Good night. Being disqualified. Good night with 2.23 left. Kaheem Brown will finish the evening with seven points and five fouls. Some assists, maybe some steals, but right now we're going to concentrate on Somerville at the line. And he gets that first one to go. Somerville has had a pretty solid night tonight. You know, one of the better nights, you know, he's had. Yeah, it, it is one of the better nights. Uh, again, his season high was eight in the season opener against uh, Georgia Tech. And he, and look, he, he, he looks a both. little gimpy there, like he's kind of laboring some sort of injury or pain. Well, if, if you ask head coach Stan Waterman, a lot of guys over there are playing hurt. Some of them yeah. not playing it's at just all. Not smart, man. Now, Barnes, awesome. a little aggressive on his defense there, gets called for his third personal. And guess who he's going to send to the line with it? Yeah. Yeah. And the, the guy Bryant. we don't want to, Joe Bryant. Yeah, the guy you don't want to see go to the line here with 2.15 left and a 12-point lead for Norfolk State. At this point, if I'm, if, if I'm Coach Jones, I just put the ball in Bryant's hands and they're going to foul you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you just keep the ball. Don't, don't yeah, pass it around. They keep fouling every time. Yeah. And he hits every I don't time, need no too. Other, I don't need no other offense. He hits his foul shots every time. Got the first. Yeah, you can't foul him. Somerville back into the game for Delaware State. Barnes goes to the bench. And he started to sit down next to the 
coach. Then he tried to go down the bench and found out there were no seats down there. So he's going to have to sit near the coach. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're still doing offense, defense, so he's in the right place. Yeah. Joe Bryant with the second shot that goes in, 17 points on the night for him. Parker wants three off the rim. Somerville there for the follow-up. It wouldn't fall in, and Bryant got the rebound. Don't two minutes him. to play. Don't foul this kid. It's a 14-point game with under two minutes to go. Bryant takes it down the right side quickly and puts on the brakes. He's being guarded by Martez Robinson. Gets it off on the pass to Dana Tate. Tate sends it inside to Terrence Jones. Jones' shot is rejected by Somerville. Inside, Munez gives it off to Robinson. Robinson That's an missed call. the layup, and we have a foul, and it's going to be Bryant called That's for That's an it. excellent call because he was moving. He was there, but he was moving. Third foul on Bryant now, 10th team foul. With a minute and 35 to go, Robinson in the act of shooting when he was fouled. You know, this has been a very well-officiated ball game, too, you know. Um, obviously, you're not going to make every call, and there may be some that's a little questionable, but all in all, it's been a very well-officiated game. And I'll, I'll, I'll agree with you to this aspect, especially. It's been a very physical game, and those kind of games in the MEAC can get out of control very easily, and these officials have kept it from doing that. I concur. I, I'd prefer if you agreed. <laughs> 70 to 58. <laughs> yes. Robinson getting both from the line. Martez Robinson with 22 points on the night. 30-second timeout. Once again, remind you, put this on your calendar, please. Starting on Thursday, January 19th, we're going to have a coaches show. It's going to be at the Boulevard Restaurant on Bay Road in Dover. We're going to start on HSRN at 645, and then they're going to start recording the program for showing on YouTube, made available on the day after. But the live audience, you want to be part of it and have a chance to see the coaches and be part of the, the whole atmosphere at the Boulevard Restaurant on Bay Road. I'll be there to kind of keep things under control as best as I can. And then interview and, and host the program. Hope you'll come out and be part of the live program. We're going to have some fun. I call in. Two great coaches and, and great people to talk to. Should be, a, you know, should be, a, you know, really good to be able to kind of just peel the layers back and kind of see what they have on their mind. Yeah, it's it, they're they're great talkers. Uh, we found out, uh, and, and it'll be fun to be in that kind of a setting with them, not in the heat of the moment after a game. Norfolk State was unable to put the ball on the court within five seconds after the timeout. It was a little quick, but I'll take it. <laughs> it was a quick five turnover yeah, quick to Delaware five. State. I'll take it, though. It and, and it was quick because it the, quick. The, we, we took the break with a minute and 35 left in the game, and we're down to a minute and 31. That's four seconds. Yeah, a little quick, but, but I'll take it. Clock shouldn't have even started, though, until the ball was thrown in. Right? Right. Okay. And it never came in. Hornets get the full time on the shot clock. They need to get it in. Then they do. A quick pass into Munez. Munez gets it off to Somerville in the foul circle. Gives it to Perkins. Perkins drives through the paint. His shot comes up short. Somerville's there on the right side to put it up off the glass and in. 70 to 60. 10 point game with a minute and 15 left. And the Hornets, did they foul intentionally there? Quay Parker. That gives him four on the evening. That's that's a large number of fouls considering he hasn't played a lot of minutes. Yeah, just sometimes it's just kind of circumstantial, you know, being out there and oh, I have a trying news to make a play and end up committing a foul. I have a news flash for you. Joe Bryant is not at the line. Terrence Jones is at the line, and he just scored his first point of the night with a foul shot to make it 71-60. to 60. The Spartans have done a great job making foul shots. It's the first one they've missed in a while. Well, Joe Bryant was not shooting, so that was part of it. Martez Robinson got the, the ball as it came out. Here's Munez, top of the key for three. Jevin Munez hits a three, to giving him 22 on the night. Yeah, 71-63. Still got time. Still got a chance. 
with a minute and six to go. So two Hornets combined here for 45 of their 63 points. It's not over yet. Robinson with 23, Munez with 22. Raymond Somerville's in double figures with 11. Corey Perkins has five. Okoye Parker, oddly enough, who sometimes comes in and really starts the scoring run, has been held to three. Had Parker come in and had his normal night, we might be looking at a pretty exciting finish here. But he has not hit his shots the way he normally does. Everybody has an off night, right? Every once in a while, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. So how you approach it, though, and some people are able to battle through and find a way to still get the job done. That's We've got some contact coming down here. It's Corey Perkins wears number two. Terrence Jones wears number two for Norfolk State. That's just not smart, though. I'm sorry. You, you foul before the ball even comes in bounds. Yeah. And you got an eight-point game. But, but it looked equal. You could have called that one either I way. I don't know, Coach. I don't know, no, Gary. You can't hold him. You can't, you can't um, obstruct movement. Well, but the other, the other guy's got his elbow and, and his forearm up in your face. What are you going to do? <laughs> Jones at the line. Jones hits the first. It could go either way, but yeah. I think at this juncture of the game, you don't want to you don't want to take the chance of getting called for a foul, and you know that you're in a double bonus. And they'll usually call the defensive player. Yeah, and you and you you only you only down eight. You, you know you might be able to get a trap and get a turnover or something. Well, Jones kind of hurts that as he hits both from the line to make it 73-63. So it's a 10-point game with a minute left, ah, and there's a over. steal by Jones. And he'll put it off the glass and in. And that was just That's probably gonna do it. a bit of a mental error there for Delaware State as they go down 12. Perkins went for the layup, and he was blocked. Um, not only was his shot blocked, but he was body blocked pretty hard there. Kept his feet. Chris Bankston with three personals. And Corey Perkins will go to the line for Delaware State now. He has four points on the evening. He'll shoot two here, try to get him closer with 52 and a half seconds to play. Bounces that one around. It went off the front of the rim, went back off the glass, and dropped down in for the Hornets. Perkins now the sophomore. He, his coach knew what he was going to get out of Corey Perkins when he brought him here last year from Sanford High School where Stan Waterman had been the head coach for 20 years. 10-point game again, 75-65, 40 seconds to go. Bryant dribbling around. Munez being careful not to commit a foul on Bryant. Brian, and that's who they want to have the ball. You know, if, if they foul him, Bryant's going to hurt him at the line. Down to 26 seconds, five seconds on the shot clock. Bryant from NBA range and a rainbow that falls in. <laughs> hey, man, that's what a senior does to you. 78-65. Hornets missing down at the other end. Norfolk State's just going to hold on to the ball here. Delaware State's not going to do anything overt. Corey Perkins reached down and almost stole it away from Bryant. Got a little lackadaisical here in the last couple of seconds. Corey Perkins, Joe Bryant appreciated what Corey Perkins did too. As soon as the buzzer went off, Perkins with a grin and Joe Bryant gave him a pat on the chest like, okay, you caught me, man. I got a little lazy there yeah. and you almost took one away from me at the last <laughs> moment. Yeah, that was cool. Good effort there by uh, Corey Perkins right at the end to show the, uh, the fifth year player what a sophomore might be able to do if you forget he's there and you think, okay, they're not gonna do anything. Well, he did, he tried to take it away, wasn't able to do it, and that's how we end 78 to 65 as Norfolk State will take their second win in the conference back to Virginia with them and Delaware State suffering their second conference loss of the season. The official sponsors of HSRN are Symphony Potato Chips, Fred Drake Automotive, B2 L29 Premium Alkaline Water, America's Mortgage Coach, John Millette, the Little Creek Fire Company, and 
Cush College. This is a copyrighted broadcast of HSRN and is intended for the private use of our audience. Thank you. Any rebroadcast of the accounts of this game